I'm Helen with Floating Yoga School. Today is a 60 minute all levels vinyasa class focused on the eight limbs of yoga. So yoga is not just about the poses or the asanas, how we move on our mat. There are seven other limbs or pieces to what we call the eight limb path of yoga and we'll explore them together today. We're gonna to start seated, so find your way into a comfortable seat. Good morning, friends. How's everyone feeling today? Pretty good. Um, we've got a 60 minute vinyasa class. I've got a plan and a theme, but any special requests that you guys have for me today? I'm probably like super interested. Yeah. So. A little bit grounding. Yeah, 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 totally. And take whatever you need to kind of settle and find that. Um, we're gonna do no music today, so really focus on your breath and the sound of everyone's breath together. Um, and we'll start in a comfortable seated position. So whatever that looks like on your bottom, on your feet. You can create a really tall spine. Yeah, Claire, there's one up front if you like. As you settle into your seat, give yourself a moment to really arrive here on your mat into your practice. And just notice how you're feeling today. It's a little check-in of your physical body. A little check-in of your mind, your thoughts. And then if it's comfortable, start to deepen your breath. And breathe in and out through your nose, turning on your loud, strong, ujjayi breath, a victorious breath. Creates an audible sensation, a slight constriction at the back of your throat. And this is what really links body and mind, connects us and keeps us present. So explore today the eight limbs of yoga. While we often think of yoga as these postures, these seats, or the asanas, the poses that we do, and maybe that's what brought you to your yoga practice, there's really so much more to it. Seven other limbs or pieces, breath being one of them. If you have any intention that you'd like to set for your day or for your practice, this is a good time to put that out into the universe, to bring that into your awareness, to let this guide you for the next hour. And we'll take three more breaths just as you are. You can keep your eyes closed or gently blink them open. If your legs are crossed, switch the crossing of your legs so the opposite foot's in front or on top. It might feel a little bit awkward. If you're sitting on your feet, on your knees as I am, you can stay just as you are. Hands can come to your thighs, your knees. Start to make some circles with your body, moving with your breath. Lean a little bit forward, to the side, to the back. Just waking up some energy, turning on what we call kundalini energy, that serpent energy from the base of your spine all the way up to the crown of your head. And you might start to link your breath to that as you inhale, imagine drawing energy from the earth to your crown. As you exhale, feel that energy move back down to earth. And pay attention to any areas that feel a little bit stuck or sticky or that are just talking to you. If you've been moving in one direction, switch it up. We'll take a couple more rounds of breath, just like this. Make it really loud and strong. See if you can hear your neighbor breathe and inspire them with your breath. Awesome, guys. Come back toward a neutral spine. Sit up a little taller, big breath in. And then as you exhale, fold over your legs. Hands can come to the ground. You can let your head and your neck relax. It doesn't have to be super duper deep. 
Notice how your low back feels. Try to stay rooted and grounded, connected to the earth through your sit bones. So we're just starting slow, creating a structure. And in the eight limbs, we would think of this as the first limbs, the yama or yamas, our personal practices, restraints, controls. Slowly walk yourself back up. Find your nice tall seat again. Reach both arms to the sky. Big breath in. As you exhale, easy twist to your left. Left hand behind your right hand across to your left knee. Sit up tall with each breath in. Gently twist deeper with each breath out. Try to hug your shoulder blades together down your back. Keep breathing nice, loud, full breaths. Nice, Jen. Keep your right hand where it is. Reach your left arm to the sky. Breathe in. And then as you exhale, a little side bend toward your right knee. It may not be super deep. Try to stay rooted through your left sit bones. Breathe space into your left side. Back up. Unwind. Reach both arms to the sky. Breathe in. Twist to your right as you exhale. Right hand behind you, left hand across to your right knee. Find a length through your spine, reaching up through the top of your head. Gently twist deeper as you exhale. So the first of these yamas, or controls, restraints, is ahimsa, also known as nonviolence. Keep your left hand where it is. Reach your right arm to the sky. Breathe in. And as you exhale, a little lean toward your left knee, as much as feels good in your body. Nice, Sam. So you could think of this nonviolence quite literally, being gentle and kind to your body. But maybe also the way that you think, the thoughts that come up, the way you act toward others. And we'll slowly release. Bring it back to center, unwind, arms to the sky, big inhale. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. And then extend your legs out in front of you. So you can shake them out a little bit. We're going to keep right leg extended. Bring your left knee out to the side so your foot is inside your thigh like a little tree pose. Reach both arms to the sky as you breathe in. Really move with your breath as you exhale. Hinge over your leg. Does not have to be super deep. Still early. So practicing that kindness to your body. Non-violence. Inhale back up. Arms to the sky. As you exhale, left hand behind your low back. And you can stay right there or inhale. Lift your hips. Press into your hand, your knee, your foot. A little mild thing. Exhale, lower back down. We'll flow one more time. Inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, lean over your extended leg. Back up, breathe in. Awesome. Exhale, left hand behind you. Inhale, lift, or you can always keep your bottom down. And exhale, lower. Bring your left foot to the ground, so your knees up to the sky, your right hand behind you. And we'll take a little baby wild thing. It doesn't have to be high. You're going to press into your back hand and your right foot and start to lift your hips, left arm to the sky. Yeah, breathe here. Find space for the entire front line of your body. Nice, Claire. And slowly release yourself down. And then swap out your legs. Left leg extends, right knee moves out to the side. Two times through our flow, inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, hinge forward over your leg. Back up, breathe in. Exhale, right hand behind your low back. You can stay or use your inhale to lift. Nice, Emma. Use your exhale to release back down. Back up, breathe in. Exhale, over your extended leg. Inhale, lift high, hands to the sky. Exhale, right hand behind you. Stay low or inhale, lifts. Fantastic. Exhale, release it down. This time, right foot comes to the ground, knee to the sky. Left hand behind you, little wild thing. Again, finding the version, the depth that feels right for you today. The second of our yamas is satya or truthfulness. To be really honest in your body and your practice today. Slowly release down. And then find your way to hands and knees, tabletop position. You can roll over your feet. Find whatever movements feel appropriate here. Cow and cat, side to side, a child's pose. 
Really let it be intuitive. Move the way that your body wants. Finding that sense of truth for you today, whether that's more grounding sensation, staying close to the earth, more gentle, more challenging. Really let that guide you throughout our time on the mat together. Breath is constant, steady. It also keeps you rooted in the present, keeps you grounded in your body. And as you feel like you've had enough, we'll meet in a downward facing dog, hips high to the sky. Feel free to move around in down dog, pedal at your feet, sway a little side to side, relax your head, your neck. The third of our yamas is asteya, and asteya is non-stealing. And this could be physical things, this could be ideas, this could be fair trade. A big one for me is time. So being really conscious of being on time, unless you get stuck behind a train and totally normal. <laughs> of using your time wisely, of not stealing other people's energies or time. As you bend your knees, breathe in, look forward. Step, hop, float toward your hands, exhale. Lift halfway, breathe in, long spine. Exhale, forward fold, relax your head and neck down. Beautiful, rise to standing, arm sweep high, full breath in. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. Sun salute A. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, forward fold, flat back. Engage your core. Take your time. Really use your breath. Nice, Kate. Lift halfway as you breathe in. And then your version of transition to down dog through your vinyasa. You can come to your knees for tabletop. Awesome, Sam. You can lower halfway. Chaturanga to up dog. You can take it to your belly for cobra. Remembering that nonviolence, remembering truthfulness, and remembering not to steal energy from yourself where it's not there. Really allowing this to be what you need it to be. Three full rounds of breath. Next, inhale, bend your knees, look to your hands. Exhale, travel to the top of your mat, find your way there. Nice, Joe. Halfway lifts, breathe in. Forward fold, relax your head and neck. Reach up, stand up, hands to the sky. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. One more like that, Surya Namaskar A or Sun Salute A. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, dive forward, really link your breath to your movements. Lift halfway as you breathe in. Your transition to down dog vinyasa as you exhale. Beautiful, Diane. The fourth of the yamas is brahmacharya. Sometimes it's known as celibacy. I, my preference or my preferred translation is right use of energy or not wasting energy. So similar to that asteya, how can you be mindful of your own energy? Spend it, use it on things that are important to you. One more full round of breath. Whether that's in your physical yoga practice or off your mat. Bend your knees, breathe in, look forward. Step, hop, float to your hands, exhale. Lift halfway, breathe in. Forward folds, breathe out. Rise up, reach up, full inhale. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. And your hands can stay at heart center in this prayer Anjali Mudra. They can come by your sides. Close your eyes. Take a moment to scan from your feet all the way to the crown of your head and adjust your stance in a way that feels supportive, that feels rooted, that feels balanced left and right, forward and back. Notice all those little places in your body that need a little extra tension. Really continue to breathe full deep breaths. And as you're here, think about the last of the yamas. The fifth one is a parigraha, also known as non-hoarding, not taking or holding on to what is not needed, or you can think of it as non-attachment. So maybe today you let go of the way the poses look like and really be in the feeling of your practice. As you next inhale, chair pose, adjust as you need, sit low, reach your hands high. 
And then take a few breaths to really feel the chair, the heat, the connection to the earth. Press through your heels, lift your low belly, relax your shoulders. Nice, Claire. Breathe. Awesome, one more inhale. Fold, fold as you exhale. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale your vinyasa to downward facing dog. And that vinyasa, that transition, that intentional placement of your body can be anything. A step back, a moment in child's pose. Traditionally, it's chaturanga up dog, down dog, but that can look any way today. Draw your feet together so your big toes touch. Reach your right leg to the sky. Big inhale. Open up your hip, bend your knee. Find a little bit of movement here. Circle your ankle, draw circles with your knee, bend and straighten through your leg. Yeah, Haley. Both directions if you're circling. Extend your leg long, breathe in. As you exhale, place your foot forward. It might come between your hands. It might come about halfway. You can adjust however you need to get into a supported crescent lunge. We're going to lower back knee down and reach both arms to the sky. If that feels good in your body, if you prefer, you can keep your fingertips down. You can lift your back knee. You can bring your hands to your front thigh. Try to even out your hips, left hip forward, right back. Engage your glutes and then gently let your hips sink a little bit closer without collapsing. Yeah, a little closer to the ground, I should say. Breathe here. So just as we have the yamas, the personal practices or restraints, you could think of those sometimes as things not to do. We have the second limb of yoga, which is the niyamas. And these again are personal practices. Big breath in as you are. Exhale, release your hands down. We're going to take this to a knee down warrior two. So your left foot pivots to the side. Open up to the side of your mat. A little funky, you can adjust however you like. And then start to sink a little deeper into your hips here. And I think of the niyamas as really more personal practices. And the first one is saucha, and that could be cleanliness or purification. So maybe you try to think about your breath as purifying your body, as filling you up with what you need, letting you release all the stuff you don't need. One more full round here. Reverse warrior, stretch it up and back. Your left hand can come down your thigh or maybe even to the ground. And then as you exhale, cartwheel your hands down. Adjust your back foot, find your way back to down dog. Maybe you come to a tabletop, move through cow and cat. Maybe simply step it up and back. Find your flow. So it doesn't always have to be fast or hard or the most. I'm trying to move with awareness. Beautiful, Nicole. Second side, feet together, big toes touch. Left leg to the sky, breathe in. Open up your hip, bend your knee. Allow a little bit of movement here. Explore how that feels. The second of the niyamas, again, those personal practices. Before you even get on your mat, things that you can work on or things you can work on on your mat is santosha. And santosha is contentment. See so if you can find a sense of gratitude or contentment here in your body, in your practice. Extend your leg long, breathe in. Exhale, step your foot forward wherever it lands or guide it between your hands. Right knee lowers down. Both arms to the sky. You've got a good few breaths here, so really feel the sensations that you're feeling. Notice if you're holding tension somewhere. If you can add a smile, make it a little lighter. A little bit more grateful here. Yeah, beautiful breath. Keep it up. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release your hands to the ground. Find that knee down warrior two. Right foot pivots behind you. Open up to the side of your mat. We're not super duper concerned with alignment just yet, but we will get there. Obviously making sure that your body is safe. We can move a little in and out, find the depth. The third of these niyamas is tapas or tapas. And this is self-discipline or drive. When your mind wants to wander, when you don't want to do your practice, whether that's your physical asana practice or the other stuff that you do in your life that feels like yoga, how do you bring yourself back? One more breath. How do you stay focused and driven? Reverse warrior, stretch it up and back. 
Exhale, cartwheel your hands down. Make your way to downward facing dog. A child's pose is a beautiful option. Dolphin on your forearms is fantastic as well. Just remember that right use of energy. Remember your truth. Remember your intention. If you set one, whatever that was. So nice. Use your breath in to bend your knees, look forward. Take your time, exhale, step, hop, float to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, lengthen. Slide your shoulders down your back, away from your ears. Exhale, forward fold, maybe a little bit more depth. Knees can absolutely bend here. Rise up, arms to the sky, big inhale. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. Inhale, back to your chair pose. Find any adjustments, make sure you can see your toes. Relax your shoulders, and this time bring your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. Reach your hands back, open up your chest, take a big breath in, you're welcome to stay right here, or as you exhale, drop your belly to your thighs and start to fold over your legs, peel your arms off your back. If you prefer your legs a little bit wider, please feel free to spread them. Yeah, maybe movement side to side, bend one knee, lift the opposite shoulder. The fourth of our niyamas is svadhyaya, or self-study. This could be journaling, this could be simple awareness in your practice, in your day-to-day -day life. Really notice the stuff that's coming up for you. Hands can release to the ground, forward folds. Lift halfway, breathe in. Exhale, hands down, optional curl pose, or simply meet us in downward facing dog. If you want curl, plant your palms, bend your elbows, make a shelf, knees to triceps, look forward, lean forward, press into your fingers to float your feet off the ground. Yeah, and then step it back, hop it back, find your way to downward facing dog. And then the fifth and last of the niyamas is Ishvara Pranidhana, and that's surrender to something greater than yourself. Can you let go of the stuff that you can't control? The sounds around you, the temperature of the room, the weather. Feet together, big toes touch, reach your right leg to the sky, breathe in. Open up your hip, bend your knee. A little bit of movement here. If you want to flip for a wild thing, right foot falls behind you, right arm reaches forward. That's it, Joe. Big stretch, beautiful Kelly. If you flipped with control, strong core, come back to your three-legged dog. Extend your leg long, deep breath in. Exhale, step your foot forward between your hands. This time we'll keep back knee lifted, so if you need to adjust your front foot a little bit more forward, feel free. Rise to a high crescent lunge, breathe in. Stay for your exhale. One more inhale. Exhale to warrior two, open to the side. So same shape we took earlier, this time knee is lifted. Check out your feet, front heel in line with back heel or arch. Make sure you can still see your right big toe and then settle into that thigh, really press through your feet. Find connection to the earth. Breathe here. Our next inhale, we'll take star pose, heels and toes out, reach really wide, take up some space. As you exhale, goddess squat, cactus your arms, bend your knees. Hands behind your head, interlace your fingers so your elbows are wide, take a breath in here. And then exhale, right elbow toward your right thigh, for me it's no, not nearly close to it. Back to center, breathe in. And then exhale to your left. Flow with your breath like that, inhale through center. Exhale right, nice breath, back to center, exhale left. One more time in each direction, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. Back to center, inhale, star reach, exhale warrior two toward the top of your mat, reverse warrior, reach it up and back. And exhale, make your way back to downward facing dog. Your flow, take it, leave it. Take a moment to pause, reset your breath. Our third limb or third piece of yoga is our asana. 
And asana translates to seat, so our poses, our postures, originally designed to allow us to sit in meditation a little bit longer, a little bit more comfortably. Now many of us use these poses to become more present in our body. Take big toes together to touch. Reach your left leg to the sky, breathe in. Open up your hip, bend your knee. Find your movement if you flipped on the other side and you want to flip for a wild thing, left foot falls, left arm reaches forward. Allow yourself to be the shapes, be the poses, the asanas. With control back to three-legged dog, extend your leg long. Big inhale. Exhale, step forward between your hands. High crescent lunge, rise up. Exhale to stay, make any adjustments, settle in. One more deep breath in. Exhale to warrior two. A little bit of time here to settle, to arrive, to simply be. And really notice your breath. Inhale to star pose, heels in, toes out, reach really wide. Exhale, goddess squat with cactus arms. And just hold here for a moment. Feel the shape. Notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling. We're going to move on to our fourth limb of yoga, pranayama. Little funky breath here. So keeping your cactus shape, or keeping your goddess shape, I should say, you're going to reach your arms forward. We're going to do a breath of fire. You can imagine pumping your diaphragm in and out really fast. And I exhale, pull my elbows in to add a little shape to it. You might be feeling your legs. You can come out. So it looks like a fast, forceful exhale and a passive inhale. <laughs> And if this breath doesn't work for you, find another breath that does. Feel free to change your legs. Building a little extra heat. Really feeling prana life force yama control. So that control of energy through your breath. Let's do three more. Awesome, guys. Back to star. Breathe in. Warrior two. Breathe out. Awesome. Reverse warrior. Stretch it up and back. Exhale, cartwheel your hands down. Make your way to down dog or a child's pose. Well deserved. So I know in my own practice, I found yoga first through the shapes, the poses, that physical embodiment. Allowed me to be more present, more grounded, more rooted. And then I realized, oh, there's something else to this. When I add my breath, I'm able to stay a little bit more present, a little bit more connected. So you've got those yamas, the niyamas, the personal practices, the things that we don't do, the things that we do do. You've got the asana poses, pranayama, the breath. And the fifth limb of yoga is pratyahara, or withdrawal of senses. So if you're not in a child's pose and you like child's pose, find your way into it. If you prefer a different shape, please feel free to stay. But as you move into that child's pose or that inward shape, Try to really remove all influence of the outside world. Perfect timing, the things that we hear, the things that we smell, the things that we see, the things that we notice. While those might keep us present and grounded, those can also be distractions. So it's this practice of going inward, withdrawing your senses, starting to move into the more meditative side of our yoga practice. And we're going to combine pratyahara, withdraw of senses, with a little breath work. So you can come into a seated position on your feet and knees if that's comfortable. You're welcome to move on to your bottom. Um, a little funky since I'm wearing a shield, but I'll demonstrate it. Shanmukhi Mudra. And for this one, you're going to take your thumbs and plug your ears. You're going to take your pinky fingers next to your lips, ring fingers above your lips, middle next to your nose and your pointers kind of rest on your eyelids. And the idea is that you're closing everything off. You can let your eyes gently close, press into your ears. You can keep your nose, your nostril open and breathing. And we're gonna take three buzzing or humming sounds. So full breath in, exhale, hum or buzz. Two more at your pace. Mm. 
Fantastic. When you finish, let your hands rest in your lap. Keep your eyes closed. Just notice how you're feeling. That's a brahmari or buzzing bee breath. And shanmukhi mudra or a good practice in going inward. Take your time back to downward facing dog when you feel ready to get there. We'll just add on a little bit to our flow. Feet together, big toes touch. Reach your right leg to the sky, breathe in. Open up your hip, bend your knee, you can stay. You're welcome to flip for a wild thing. Right foot falls behind you, right arm reaches forward. If you flipped, use a strong core to come back to a three-legged dog. Extend your leg long, deep breath in. Exhale, knee to nose, shift forward, round through your upper back, really puff it up. So pulling in that discipline or fire here, inhale, right leg to the sky. Exhale, tap your right elbow or shoulder with your knee. Back up, breathe in. Cross it over to your left elbow or shoulder. Extend your leg for fallen triangle. Left heel pivots flat, left arm reaches high. You can stay just like this if you want a little bit more. You can start to float your right foot off the ground. Tune into your core strength, your fire. One more inhale. Exhale, hand down, right leg to the sky. Reach it up and back. Your next exhale, step your foot forward between your hands. High crescent lunge, arms overhead, big breath in. Just the inhale takes you there. Exhale, open to warrior two. Inhale to star pose, heels in, toes out, reach wide. This time exhale, hands to your hips, parallel your feet. Take another breath in to lengthen your spine and as you exhale, fold over your legs. Press through to Padottanasana, hands can relax down, head and neck can go down. And then I'll give you a little bit of time to find what feels best in your body, movement or stillness. Thinking about that withdrawal of senses, thinking about your personal practice, your intention, no matter what anybody else is doing or what you feel like you should be doing, what is the best for you right now? Two more full rounds of breath. We always have a second side so you can come back to something else if you need to. Begin to turn back toward your right foot. We're going to set up for lizard pose. Right foot moves outside your right hand. Back knee can stay lifted or lowered down. You can be on your palms. You can lower to your forearms. If you drop your back knee, you can reach back with your right hand for your foot for a twist and a quad stretch. Wherever you are, try to slide shoulders out of your ears. Release some tension in your face. Stay connected, using that strong ujjayi breath, victorious breath. One more full round. Onto your palms, release your foot. If you have it, lift your back knee. If it's lower, take a breath in, look forward. Malasana, wide squat. As you exhale, left foot comes outside your left wrist. Heels in, toes out, sit low. Hands to your heart. You are more than welcome to hang out. You can take it to a seat on your bottom. You can take it to a forward fold. If you want a little bit of movement, a sway side to side or open one arm. If you want curl pose, curl to headstand, please feel free to explore here. A good three rounds of breath, maybe more. Slowly make your way down to a seated position for a boat pose, bottom down. Balance on your sit bones, float your shins. Hands can come behind your legs. Go wide or if you want a little bit more arms to the sky, legs straight. Lift your heart, relax your shoulders, add a smile. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Let's see if you can focus on something that feels good. Whether that's the knowledge that you're going to be out of this soon or something else. One more inhale. Exhale your way to downward facing dog. Our sixth limb of yoga is dharana, and dharana is focus or concentration. 
And it could be your drishti, where your eyes are in a specific pose. It could be something you're thinking about, a theme or an intention. Feet together, big toes touch. Reach your left leg to the sky, breathe in. Open your hip, bend your knee. Movement, stillness, a flip for wild thing. One more time in this shape if you want it. If you flip with control, bring it back. Yeah, Joe. Extend your leg long, deep breath in. Exhale, knee to nose, shift it forward. Inhale, leg high. Left knee, left elbow, exhale. Back up, breathe in, breath sounds amazing. Cross it to your right, fall in triangle, extend your foot, right heel flat, right arm up. Really lift your hips. Focus on your top hand. Maybe you float your left foot. One more inhale, yeah, Jen. Exhale, hand down, left leg to the sky, three-legged dog, breathe in. Exhale, step forward between your hands. High crescent lunge, inhale, rise up. Exhale, warrior two, open to the side. Star pose, heels in, toes out, breathe in. Exhale, hands to your hips, or if you like, interlace behind your back, parallel your feet. Lengthen your spine, breathe in. Fold over your legs as you exhale. And again, a little time to play, to find your version of this pose, to concentrate on where you can send some energy in your body that needs a little extra attention. And it doesn't have to be a physical manifestation. It could be an emotional one. Another three to four rounds of breath. One more here, take your time if you're playing. We're gonna turn toward your left foot, make your way into your lizard pose. Shimmy your foot off to the side, hands inside. Back knee lifted or down, forearms down if that's accessible and feels good. If you want the twist, left hand can reach back for your right foot with your knee down. Each side is different, so allow it its own experience. <clears throat> And as we move from dharana into the next limb, the seventh limb, it's prolonged concentration or prolonged focus to be meditation. So you might have these little moments in your practice where you're steady on something, your breath, an idea, a feeling. The more we can stay in that mode of focus, that awareness, the more it becomes a moving meditation or a still meditation. One last breath. Palms down, back knee lifted if it's down. Look forward, breathe in. Exhale, squat, right foot steps outside your right wrist. Heels in, toes out, sit low. Another few rounds of breath. This time we'll take it to a forward fold. So when you've had enough, you're welcome to go to ragdoll. If you want movement here, find it. If you want stillness, take it. If there's something else that's calling your name, please listen to that. Yeah, if you haven't yet, find your rag doll. Feet pretty wide. You can hold opposite elbows. You can hold hands to the back of your neck. If you prefer, one hand to the sky, one hand down, or hands over to one side. Give yourself a little time to wiggle. And then back to center. If you're off to the side, make sure you're even right and left. Heel toe your feet in toward each other. Knees bent, tailbone heavy. Roll to standing so your head is the very last thing to come up. At the top, shrug your shoulders up to your ears. Relax them down your back. One more time. Big breath in. And breathe it out. We'll take it to tree pose. So focus your eyes on something, your drishti, a nice place to practice dharana and dhyana. So the seventh limb, that meditation. Wait into your left foot, right foot comes up, ankle, calf, thigh, or if you prefer a half lotus or something else, you can go there. The more steady your eyes and your breath are, the easier it is to be present. And 
Meditation doesn't have to be sitting in lotus quietly with nothing on your mind. It's simply that prolonged focus or a gentle awareness of what's happening. Let yourself fall, come right back. Two more breaths. Release your foot down, shake it out. Let go of whatever happened or didn't happen and find your setup for the second side. Wait into your left foot, your right foot comes up or whichever side you didn't just do. Notice what you notice. Two more full breaths. As you're ready, release it out, shake it all out. Inhale, arms to the sky, big stretch up. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. Twice more like that. Inhale, reach to the sky, gather up some good energy. Exhale, draw it down to heart center. One more time, breathe in, reach overhead. Breathe out, hands to heart, and then fold forward. Lift halfway, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, your transition to downward facing dog. The last of our eight limbs, or what we're kind of working toward, if you will, um, if that doesn't mess with your head too much, is this idea of samadhi, bliss or enlightenment. For me, it's pure presence. It's when I'm in the flow, and it'll be different for each of us. Reach your right leg to the sky, big breath in. We're gonna take it to pigeons or right shin forward. If you know you prefer this on your back or you have knee stuff, you can lay onto your back, take a figure four. You're welcome to take a double pigeon, a different hip stretch if there's something else that feels better for you. And then allow yourself to melt into it. Simply be here. Practicing that pure presence. Maybe allowing yourself to feel bliss. Perhaps coming back to that idea of contentment with whatever's happening, gratitude with what you have, what you are. And of course, breath to stay anchored and rooted in the present. You might find in these moments of stillness and quiet, the tendency to wander, or a deeper awareness, that practice of self-study or svadhyaya. Whatever it is that's coming up for you, allow yourself to experience it without judgment, without labeling. One more round of breath. If you'd like some more time, please stay as you are. Otherwise, you can gently lift yourself up and out. Take counter movements. Maybe that's back to a three-legged dog. Shake out your leg. Maybe that's another shape. Yeah, if you're on your back, you can stay right there. And as you feel ready, please let yourself be the guide. You'll take your second side, left leg high, left shin forward, or your figure four, a different shape. Each side is different.
Each day is different. And so we keep coming back to our practice to keep working on the things that allow us to deal with the other stuff in life. Things that maybe make us feel good or maybe make us realize what doesn't feel good or what isn't working. And while originally these eight limbs of yoga were written and created by a guy named Patanjali as a way to standardize yoga, because we all have such different experiences, different lifestyles, different bodies, I really believe that we should all have different ways of practicing and should honor and allow for that. A few more rounds of breath. When your sides feel even or you feel ready to come out, slowly lift yourself up and out. Counter movements, other stretches. Eventually we'll meet in hands and knees tabletop but take your time to arrive there. From your hands and knees, we'll work into a little thread the needle. Right arm reaches out and up to the sky. Roll your wrist a few times. Thread your arm to the left. Drop your shoulder and your head down. Left hand can stay, reach, or wrap. If you'd like a little bit more heat, a little bit more challenge, you can extend your left leg behind you to work on balance. Nice, Nicole. If your foot is lifted, lower your knee back down. Unwind, left hand by your face, unthread right arm, out and up, counter stretch, big breath in. Exhale, release your hand down, switch sides, left arm high, roll your wrist. Thread to your right, drop your shoulder, your head. Right hand stays, reaches or wraps. Maybe right leg extends if you played on the other side or want to do so here. If your leg is floating, bring your knee back down. Unthread, right hand by your face, left arm out and up, counter stretch, inhale. Exhale to release. We're gonna come to a seat next. If you would like to move through downward facing dog to hop through, you can. Otherwise, you can simply swing your legs out in front. Bring your bottom to the ground, soles of your feet together, knees out wide for cobbler's pose or a little butterfly shape. Great length through your spine. Breathe in, sit up tall. And then exhale, start to hinge forward over your legs. And you can absolutely let things round forward if you want to relax your head and your neck. Continue this practice of noticing as we slowly start to wind ourselves down to make our way into our final rest. Lift yourself up. Same shape we did at the beginning of class. Your left leg can stay as it is. Right leg extend long in front. If you'd rather it a little bit more open to the side, that's a nice option as well. Both arms to the sky, big breath in. Exhale, head to knee, Johnny Shirshasana. Doesn't mean it goes anywhere close, it's just in that direction. You can stay like that. If you'd like this more of a twist, right hand or forearm can come inside your leg. Left arm reaches up and over to get into your side body a little bit more. Fantastic options. Breathe wherever you are, whatever you've chosen. 
And imagine using the power of your breath to create space and openness, to release any of the stuff that you don't want to hold on to. Two more full deep breaths. Slowly begin to lift yourself up. Same little counter stretch you did at the beginning. Left hand behind you, right arm to the sky. Press through your hand, your knee, your foot to lift your hips, lengthen. And then lower yourself down. Left sole of your foot on the ground, option to keep it inside your knee or to cross it over on top of your right leg. And if it's comfortable for you, you can bend your right leg. For me, that kind of lifts my sit bones off the ground, so I like my right leg straight. Left hand behind you will take a twist. You can either hug your knee or you can hug your elbow outside your knee. Sit up taller as you breathe in and then twist a little deeper as you breathe out. As we did when we started, sit up taller. Feel the length through your spine, the energy moving from the base of your spine all the way up to the crown of your head and back down. And gently unwind, counter twist to your right. That can be more upright. That can be a little dip forward with your head. Release and switch legs. Left leg extends, right knee out to the side like your tree pose, seated. Hands high to the sky, breathe in. Exhale, hinge over your extended legs, stay like that. If you took the twisted version, left hand inside, right arm reaches up and over for more of a side bend. If you set an intention, we started begin to come back to that idea, that feeling. Slowly lift yourself up. Bring your right hand behind you, left hand to the sky. You can stay low or lift your hips. And lower yourself down if you lifted. Work into your twist, right sole of your foot, either inside your left knee or outside. Maybe left knee bends if that feels good. Right hand behind you, left arm can hug your knee, elbow can hook outside your knee. Try to get light on your back fingertips. You're really reaching up through the crown of your head. And gently imagine wringing out your spine like a towel of water. So lovely, unwind, counter twist to your left, upright or a little dip forward. Back to center, extend your legs. If there's something else you'd like to do from seated, now's a good time to take it. Otherwise you can come onto your back. Maybe it's a slow roll down, maybe it's a simple plop. And then give yourself a moment when you come onto your back of stillness to simply feel. What else would your body like before our final rest? You've got a couple of minutes. Take any last shapes, another twist, a back bend, a happy baby, other wiggles or stretches. If you feel good in stillness, you are more than welcome to stay or adjust your shape for a final rest. So a little recap of those eight limbs. The first is yama, and the five yamas are practices, restraints, controls, sometimes seen as things not to do. Ahimsa, nonviolence. Satya, non-lying or truthfulness. Asteya, non-stealing. Brahmacharya, not misusing energy. And aparigraha, not hoarding or non-attachment. The second limb is niyamas, 
more practices, things you can do off your mat in your life, maybe a little bit more personal, things to do versus not to do. Saucha is cleanliness or purification. Santosha is contentment. Tapas is discipline, inner drive. Svadhyaya is self-study. Ishvara Pranidhana is surrender to something greater than yourself. The third limb of yoga is asana, our seat, our postures, our physical practice. The fourth is pranayama, breath work, control of life force. The fifth is pratyahara, withdrawal of senses or going inward. Sixth is dharana, focus or concentration. Seventh is dhyana, meditation or prolonged concentration. And the eighth is samadhi, bliss, enlightenment, presence, being in the flow, however you want to imagine that. For these last few moments, allow yourself to simply be here, present, aware. You're more than welcome to stay as you are, as long as you'd like. If you feel ready to move on with your day, start with your breath. Be aware of it, deepen it. And then add back in other movements, little wiggles of fingers and toes, a gentle rock side to side of your head. Gradually let those movements get larger. Wrists, ankles, big stretch, arms above you. And in your time, your way, turn to one side, eyes closed, a moment in a fetal position. A pose of rebirth, a chance to start fresh each time you come onto your mat, really each breath that you take. We'll slowly come up to a comfortable seat. Maybe the same when you started your practice in, coming full circle. Eyes still closed or a soft gaze. And then place your palms together in front of your heart. Think about one way you can practice yoga that isn't doing poses, that isn't on your mat. Empathy or compassion for a stranger being kinder or more truthful with yourself, whatever it is. Let that carry you into the rest of your day. We'll bow our heads together. Namaste. Thanks, guys. Have a lovely one. Let me know if you have questions, and I'll see you soon.